Good morning guys, Diana here from Garden Love. Today I'm making a quick video about my passion fruit that's completely taking over my yard. I made the biggest mistake I could have possibly made this year. All right, let me show you and let me explain why. As you guys can see, this passion fruit started out from there and it took off both that way and this way. And as you guys can see, it's completely taken off all over, including taking over my apple tree, which is a big issue because we have some apple uh, blooms and it's continuing to grow all the way up there. Now you might wonder, why is that an issue? Well, it's an issue because in case you didn't know, passion fruits flower on new branches, as you guys can see. This is all new growth, and there is a passion fruit bloom there. And normally it wouldn't be an issue if you had a big enough yard for this passion fruit for it to take over and not um, encroach other areas of your garden and shade off your raised beds and basically run out of <laughs> wall space. So it wouldn't have been an issue if I had plenty of space considering that I am in a very small um, lot with very small growing space it's an issue because it's taking over the 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 branches or the vines under it is not gonna fruit because it's gonna fruit all in the new growth as you guys can see they're pretty much everywhere which I'm very excited to see these little buds so my mistake was not to prune this vine a lot earlier than now now my dilemma is if I prune it prune it I'm gonna miss out on the fruit so if I don't prune it I am going to have a huge vine growing in my yard that's overflowing everywhere in my garden which I might just have to deal with that and constantly come in here and take all these little vines that are encroaching in my growing area and just basically push them over and just it's gonna have to be a constant chore because this vine grows fast and it grows like crazy as you guys know I put that in the garden a year ago a year and a half ago and it's done this much growth in just a year and a half ago and I'm pretty pretty soon I'm gonna have to get a ladder and really push up all the vines that are coming over this fruit tree this apple tree and push them back and hopefully they can just reroute themselves into this fence um, which I wouldn't mind them growing on this fence the problem is I don't know how they're gonna hold themselves up there they're somehow managing to do that right now and I can see a flower from here and I am going to get up there to show you guys how amazing these flowers are because really one of the biggest benefits of growing a passion fruit not only for the fruit and the basically the a privacy wall that it's giving me but it's the amazing flowers that you get from and they are um, just out of this world I mean you would think they are from Mars or something if they had plants there because they're very unique plants and they have just an amazing color they have these little tentacles growing from the side and I wish there was one here blooming close so I can see I can show you guys but it's not so the purpose of this video guys the purpose of this video guys is that I will oh, <laughs> let me zoom out the purpose of this video guys is that um, next year we cannot make the same mistake this is giving you a whole year's worth of notice next year if you're growing a passion fruit make sure that you prune your passion fruit right before spring hits right before it starts getting warm right before it starts growing their their um, new vines their new growth because then that way all that new growth will be the new cover of this trellis and you can have all your flowers and you won't have this huge mess unless you want to completely cover a fence then then it would, shouldn't be an issue but i've been thinking about this a lot i was going to do it and then i realized it was too late because there's already tons of new buds i mean you can see them all over every single um vine has a new little bud i mean 
You might not be able to tell, but this is a baby one in the works. Look at that. And in fact, like I mentioned earlier, there's already some uh, flowers that have opened up. So there's definitely no way I'm going to trim this this year. So this is a mistake I made this year. I'm not going to make it the next year. I will try to give you guys a reminder at the beginning of the year, right around the time. At least here for Southern California, it's going to be probably around January, between January and March. We don't want to um, trim them too soon because if there's still any risk of frost, you don't want to cut it down and then it damage whatever you did leave. So just a quick video, guys, an update on this something to think about over the next few months and something to prepare for next season all right guys i hope you guys are having a blessed day you guys are out in the garden enjoying this beautiful sun um admiring what you have worked so hard to get and just attending to your garden feeding it watering it whatever it is that you need to do hopefully there's something that you get done today all right, guys, you guys have a blessed day. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. I'm trying my best to remove these passion fruit vines from my apple tree because it's casting a shadow on it and it's growing under shade now. It's going to prevent all the branches that are still alive and thriving on this tree from blooming and leafing out. So for that reason, I am going to try my best to remove them, move them to the side, and hopefully they can just reroute themselves to the fence like I mentioned earlier. Now, I do want to give you guys heads up about this apple tree. It's dying on me. I did plan on removing it this season, however, I did not get around to it. So my goal for the beginning of next season is to definitely move it out of the spot. I am planning on putting my favorite nectarine tree there. Some of you guys might be asking, why don't I just put a loquat tree? And I'll tell you guys why. The loquats tend to get really big with a big canopy. And I don't want the loquat to actually cast a shadow on the rest of the areas where I'm growing vegetables because we all know that we need sunlight for vegetables to grow and produce. So I don't want the loquat tree to get too big in this part of my garden and it will prevent my other vegetables from growing. So I'm gonna stick with the stone fruit um, because it will shed the leaves in the winter and it will allow my vegetables to grow. All right guys, well I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are having an opportunity to go out in the garden. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.